All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. We are back to Frosthaven. And uh, we're going to get started here in just a second. Just want to make All sure right. everything Hello, is everyone. working correctly. It looks like Welcome we're back. live. We and are it looks like my audio is coming through okay. Frosthaven. Let me know in the chat if you can and hear me. And uh, we're going to get started here in just a second. Once again, I'm Jeff. Jeff Swing. Anderson. Right. Uh, everything hello, is everyone. Is Captain Quicks on board like Game Welcome back. Eli. And, and I'm starting looks a, like my audio is continuing with okay. a series of solo playthroughs. And, uh, we're currently working on Frost Haven. Again, I'm Jeff. We're Jeff gonna, Anderson. Right. going to continue uh, with Frost Haven today. In back. the future, we're and, uh, I think we'll like uh, keep Frost Haven as the main event, the main entree. But every now and then, I might miss in one of my other favorite. We're going to continue with Frost Haven today. So we'll keep that going. I think we'll, as I said last time, probably going to stream. Main event about main once a week, every now and then maybe an occasional yeah, twice a week. Uh, uh, I am taking so next week off. I will be out of town yeah, attending Salt Con. Uh, uh, well, as I said last uh, time, uh, probably going to stream. So I'll be traveling about once a week, today, maybe an occasional um, twice a week. I will be with you until second week. I will be out of town. But welcome back. If this is if you were with me previously, if it's your first time, hi, I'm Jeff. Nice to meet you. With you. Please uh, uh, jump in the chat. But, uh, Let me know how this is going. If you have any questions about Frosthaven, if it's your first time, uh, any questions I about Board Game Geek that I might be able to answer, please. I'm also the director of jump events in the chat. for Board Game Geek. Let me know how this is going. If you have any questions about Spring and our gaming questions at Sea. Obviously, with a fantastic team that helps me do all that. But generally, if you have any questions about any of, those, uh, any of those events, I am happy to answer them for you. Obviously, all right, we're going to dive right in. I've also team that helps me do all that. Let's uh, clear off our map here. If you remember from last time, we were uh, up here. All right, we're going to dive right in. In the mountains of, on the outskirts uh, of our town. Our map here, here, if you remember from last time, check off that we actually we were uh, up here. All right, we're going to dive right in. In the mountains scenario, howling in the wind. I need to grab on the uh, outskirts of our town map here, if you remember. remember. That's okay. Last off the um, so we did. Uh, uh, we did here. All right, we're episode right or uh, uh, scenario we howling in the um, wind. On the outskirts uh, of our uh, town. Um, that's okay. Campaign. Um, so we did uh, uh, number zero. Here. Scenario. Here. That's the one I'm looking for. Scenario zero. Today we're going to do scenario one, which is in Frost Haven um, and is actually. Right campaign. here, um, so on we the did, uh, outside of the wall of Frosthaven, a town in flames, which sounds ominous. Today we're going to so do I'll scenario one, which is in Frosthaven, uh, and, and is actually our map right here, set up here, so we did, uh, outside of the wall of Frosthaven. Uh, one real quick cor so correction so from the end zero. of Today we're going to uh, do scenario out of the one, way. which is in Frosthaven, uh, and, and is actually scenario zero, our death walker, Chris Rowe, our death walker, near the very end. One cor correction uh, from the end of her strength of the abyss way. card. I used that ability, and I forgot to give her zero, the experience for Scenario zero, our death walker, she now Chris Rowe, our death walker, near the very end. Emmy, our human banner spear, has eight experience going into this scenario. Our death walker. All right, uh, let's see. Joe, Joe King says sound is echoing. Let's see if we can fix that. Oh, it might be coming in. All right, uh, let's see. Joe, Joe King says sound is echoing. I think I have my laptop muted. Let's see if we can. It should only be the one. Oh, it might be coming in. Oh, I know what it is. I need to turn down. No, I have audio. It should only be the one oh, case as it comes oh. through over time. No, I've got it Twitch itself it muted. No, it All right. Uh, let me know. Is that any better? It should only be the one oh, case as it comes through. Turn this down just a little bit. All right. Let me know if the sound is still echoey for you. Um, I'll try and uh, do a little bit better with this. 
If it's not clear, I'm still a beginner at uh, some of the streaming. Right, so uh, I'm doing my best. We'll, we'll learn together here. Um, I'll try and, uh, All right. If it's not so clear, let's jump in. Uh, in Frosthaven, there is an outpost phase after each successful completion of a scenario but not for scenario zero so we're and there's no uh, city event or road event before scenario zero or one so we're going right into scenario one and then we'll have some interesting stuff uh, after the scenario all right a town in flames the scenario is complete when all enemies in it are dead at the end of that round Read paragraph 9.1. Introduction. All right, a town in flames. The sounds the greet you first. Muffled, metallic pangs, a voice howling. It's difficult to make out, make anything out with the wind the rushing past your ears, but you'd know that tune anywhere. There's a fight up ahead. But a fight means people, and if there are people, then the town must be close. You hear more. A scream, the clash of steel against stone, a deep, earthy growl. You're running now. Your legs are wasted from the hike. Your shoulders ache from your gear. But the sounds are close now, and up ahead, you see gauzy orange light blooming in the air. With one last push, you round the final bend in the trail, and you see it. Frosthaven, engulfed in flame. Great petals of fire burst from windows and crawl over roofs. People stream from the town's ruined gate, their faces bent in panic. A moment later, you see the object of their terror. A massive creature with two legs and two hulking arms covered entirely in thick white fur, three gnarled horns crowning its head. Algox Raiders, we're doomed, cries an elderly porter beside you. They're stronger than anything else alive. We've come all this way for nothing. As if to prove the point, the Algox you've been watching catches a fleeing outposter with one hand and hurls him backwards as if he weighed nothing. Ten days you've been hiking. Ten days and this is what you find. You breathe out a thick plume of foggy air and hoist your weapon high. Time to get to work. Ten days. All right. Uh, Garan Garan Pa says, yes, I hear echo as well. It's better, but it is repeat, like past five, ten seconds of what you have said, but quieter. All right. Well, I'm just going to mute in case any of this is coming over the laptop speaker. I don't know why any audio would be coming through. Oh, it might be coming over. Is this? Oh, that's what it was. I had this. I had a Board Game Geeks page open as well, and that side was not muted. So there might have been some desktop audio coming through from that. I apologize. Okay. Now we should be uh, better. Okay. Let me know uh, if we're good at this point. That's it. All right. Thanks, Joe. Joe King, 2U4. All right. Okay. And I see I need to update the game in the chat as well. I've got to reach over. Hold on.
Okay, and we have the game updated so that it's showing correctly in the chat. Uh, time Roller. Hi, Time Roller. Welcome. Okay. Let me also mention, as I alluded to on the previous stream, I am now wearing progressives. I'm about to turn 50 years old. Finally broke down and ordered uh, bifocal or progressive lenses. I just got them this morning and my head is spinning. So as I look over at my laptop, as I look down, as I look up at you, it's going to take my eyes a minute to focus. So if I pronounce your name incorrectly in chat, we're just going to blame it on the glasses uh, for right now. All right. So we have our scenario uh, special rules. So we're going to have some city guards in this game, in this scenario with us. All city guards are allies to you and enemies to all other monster types. City guards do not perform turns, but instead gain an additional innate shield one for a total of shield two at level one and retaliate two and have an initiative of 50 for the purpose of focusing. So they're basically fixed in place. Uh, they have some shield against the monsters. They have an initiative for the monsters and in, in terms of determining focus and they have retaliate against the monsters. All right, when, when door one is open, read paragraph 5.3. Okay, so we're starting up here, and um, let me get set up here with our, I showed them off last time, but I feel like I need to show them off again. That is Emmy Hadwise our human banner spear. Okay, so we'll put her up there. And, and we have Chrisrol Elder Shadow. Chrisrol Elder Shadow is our Valroth uh, Deathwalker. So that's who we're playing with there. All right, so starting up in these four hexes, we'll, uh, we'll determine where they're actually starting here in a minute. And I uh, did not get a chance to build the map ahead of time, but we'll do it right quick here. So we have a log that is difficult terrain. And we have a regular... Elgox Guard, so that's this great big heavy guy. He's a regular, so give him a white base in that hex there. We have a regular Elgox Priest, that's this guy. right here behind the log with some debris right behind him. That is an obstacle. We cannot go around him. We have a basic regular town guard, one of our allies over here. And he is right in front of our snow door. And that is door number one and so we'll just grab a one here to remind us we had to, to have to read a paragraph when we open that door okay we've got a loot token down over here we have a regular algax archer I'm going to oscillate between Algox and Algox. I'm not sure which is the correct pronunciation. Tell me in the chat if you know. Okay, looks like that is everything we need set up. We are ready to dive in our town in flames. Now let me get uh, our helper going up here. Um, 
We are using Xhaven Assistance, which is a handy app for Frosthaven, Gloomhaven, Jaws of the Lion, all kinds of uh, all the different Haven products. All right, so a Town in Flames. Um, and let's see here. We need to zoom out just a little bit. There we go. All right. I think that'll be decent enough zoom so I can see it and hopefully you can see it pretty well. Also, okay, we have uh, regular Algex Archer number one. And this is regular guard number six. And regular priest number five. And town guard, regular town guard number two. All right. I think we're ready to dive in. Let me just uh, jump over here on... Um, the chat. Uh, okay, no questions so far. Um, just curious if anybody's got their copy of Frosthaven yet, um, played with it at all, or how much Gloomhaven have you played? Um, okay, we need some battle goals. And then we'll pick cards and we'll dive in to deal with this. All right. As I'm shuffling, our Algex Guard is 7 health, basic move 3, basic attack 3. The Algex Archer over there in the corner is uh, 5 health, basic move 2, basic attack 3. The Algex Priest has, uh, looks like, retaliate 1. No, that's shield 1. And basic health six, basic move two, basic attack two. All right, and our town guard is shield two, retaliate two, five health, um, but will not be doing any other move or attack. All right. Three battle goals for each. Okay, Chris Roll, Deathwalker. Assistant, kill an enemy attack by any of your allies earlier in the same round. Kill an enemy attacked by any of your allies earlier in the same round. That sounds like it should be pretty easy to do. Prepper, perform no attack abilities in the first three rounds. Um, that sounds iffy let me i don't know how much she has to set up lay about gain seven or fewer experience before any bonus scenario experience okay i think we can do that and that's going to give her two we can manage how much xp we get so let's try and keep that under seven so we're going to do lay about for a chris roll all right emmy Egoist, collect more loot tokens than any other character. Mm, I don't know about that. Uh, our, the uh, personal quest for Chris Roll, the Death Walker, is to collect eight lumber tokens. So we're going to want to let her get as much uh, loot as possible. Specialist, never perform a basic action. Hmm. Is the, she might be able to do that. I don't remember her doing very much basic last turn. Accountant, have zero cards in your hand each time you rest. Um, not very likely. So let's try specialist. Never perform a basic action. Let's see how that works. 
All right, Thunderflux says, nice to see more Frosthaven. Welcome, Thunderflux. I hope you're well. I am well. I hope you're well as well. Thank you. Okay, um, before going too far in, we do need to pick our cards. And since this is our first scenario with a full hand of cards, I'm going to follow the recommended guidance and just set aside the three X cards for now. And we're just going to go with the basic level one cards for everybody. We do need our equipment. So Emmy has winged shoes and a heater shield. And we need her basic 20 attack modifier deck. Um, where are we going to put that? Let's see. I have a little more space here. I can shift that up just a bit. Still see that? Oh, that's not enough to make a difference. We'll put the modifier cards up here. Okay, so this is Emmy's deck. And then over here for Chris Roll. Chris Roll has the Boots of Speed, which allows her to modify her initiative number up or down by 10 each time. Um, and I never did that in the scenario zero. I never really felt a need for it, but we might need to here. All right. And then we're going to put Chris Roll's modifier deck. up over here okay how's the sound now uh, sound good now okay all right joe says sound okay yep sounds fine all right fantastic and so let's take out the three x cards for chris roll and then set up on my card holder here so we can see what we have. All right. Okay, last time around for Emmy, we got her reinforcements out fairly early, which is kind of important so that she has an ally for setting up a lot of her special moves. Um, let's see, how do we want to do this? If... Tip of the spear or pincer movement. Could we we could set up pincer movement? Um, on our big Algux guard here, we need to get a big beat down on him, and that is a five attack, and that will muddle him. Oh, but pincer movement is surrounding him on either side. That might be difficult because, let's see, if we did one, two, three, and Chris goes first, one, two, up there, basic move. That might be good. Um... What else, what else could Chris Roll do? Um, attack three, target all adjacent enemies. Uh, but that's from a shadow token. So we need to get some shadow tokens out pretty quick. Um, I thought she had a, a move to, uh, no, that's just place a shadow token within two. 
Okay, she doesn't have any move and place. Um, I need to apologize at the outset. I, there's going to be a lot of thinking out loud here because I'm still getting to learn these characters. First times I've played with these characters. So uh, bear with me. I, once I know the character better, I'll be able to play a little quicker. Um, but I want to... Tip of the spear would be good. Do any of these enemies have shields? Only the priest. Um, the priest is too far away for anything like this. So... Um, oh, now that... Okay, that might work. I don't know how quickly that Algex guard is going to go, but uh, combined efforts, move to and grant all allies within to the ability to move to. So we could pincer the Algex guard here. Yeah, we're going to do that. I don't want to min max it or think too much further. So we're going to move and then let um, Chris roll move and then so we'll surround the Algex guard and do a pincer movement. Okay, so um, Chris roll can kind of just do some setup and she's got some good setup. Um, uh, I think we're going to set up Call to the Abyss which is going to get shadow tokens out um, whenever, uh, people that, or monsters, enemies that she has targeted die, we can put a shadow token out there, and hopefully that'll be this, um, this Algux guard before too long. And then we're also going to set up Strength of the Abyss. So that, uh, gives her the ability, um, once during her move or attack ability, remove a shadow token within range three to gain an XP and add two to your movement or add two to your attack. All right, so that's where we're at. We want Emmy to go relatively early, hopefully before most of the monsters. Crystal's going on 50. Um, Actually, we're going to have her go on 82, just in case there's any kind of a tie um, for the town guard uh, targeting and such. So we're now going to draw for everybody else. All right. Tan one blue says, yep, sound is fine. Um, OK. Oh, I, okay, I'm blaming it on the glasses. The earlier chat, I thought that was Thunderflux on both previous chats, but I realized that was Tanwin coming in. Uh, no need to apologize. That's what streaming is about, thinking aloud. Oh, very good. And Joe says a similar thing. It's part of playing the game. All right, fantastic. Um, my thinking out loud will give a little bit of time for you all to suggest other actions as well. This is a it's a solo playthrough, but it's really a co-op game. So if you're in the chat and you have a suggestion, please uh, jump right in. There's about a 15 to 30 second delay from what I say to myself out loud and when it comes out on the chat. So um, we'll just call that thinking out loud a delay time for you all to catch up and maybe suggest something better. But on the first turn, we're going to do what we did. Okay. So, fortunately, Emmy is going first. The Algex Guard is going on 50 with nothing special, just a move 3, attack 3. The City Guard, we know, goes on 50 and doesn't do anything, is just set up as cannon fodder. And then the Archer on 56 is Twin Bolts, attack 2, range 4, 2 targets. And then the Priest is nothing special on 62, move 2, 
attack to range three. Okay. And then Crystal cleaning up the end, but we know that she is just doing uh, some setup stuff. So Emmy goes first. Very good. Um, move two. One, two. And then grant two allies within range two. One, two. Also move two. So one, two. Um, for any reason, what I want to swap these two. That is difficult terrain. Um, Chris roll is our squishy, uh, less health. So, um, yeah, at, at this point, I've already made that decision and I've seen the enemy cards, so we're not uh, going to change it too late. All right. So we set up our move, and now we have a uh, pincer movement. We're going to attack five on the uh, Algux guard here, plus zero. So it is just five damage. And the muddle condition. Okay. And then Emmy does get an XP for that. We need to remember we don't want lots of XP for Chris roll, but we do want to never perform a basic action for Emmy. So let's try and remember that. Okay. That is Emmy's turn. And well done. That guard is almost taken down. Um... So it is now the guard's turn. Move three doesn't need to move, so just attack. Um, attack three, so is attacking the uh, attacking Emmy because they're both uh, could be targeted, but Emmy went first in turn order. That's the tiebreaker. So we will um, let's see. I need to. I think the monster deck is the one down below. Yes, that is an M on the bar down here. We're not even going to need the ally deck because our allies aren't really attacking. Um, hey, the Algex guard misses. How awesome is that? I don't even need to use my shield. All right, so that is the Algex turn. City guard doesn't do anything. Uh, Algex archer. All right, he has two targets, range four. Uh, one, let's see, does he have, he actually does not have line of sight to Emmy, um, because the only way that can get to that is touching that wall. So the only, well, does, could target the guard. So range four, one, two, three, four, not, does have to move. How much can... The archer move. Oh, the archer does not move. So there's no move. And uh, Chris roll is one, two, three, four, five hexes away. And the town guard is further. So we avoid those twin bolts. All right. And then the priest does move if needed. Attack to range three. There's only one target. Um, and so... Clearly does see Chris Roll and the Town Guard. Range two, range two, so that's a tie as well. So we go who acted first? The Town Guard acted first. So uh, the Priest is going to attack the Town Guard. Attack two plus zero. So our Town Guard is has shield two. So uh, nothing gets through the shield. All right. A good turn for the good guys. And now it is Chris Roll's turn. Um, and Chris Roll is setting up Call to the Abyss during your and your summon's attacks. Before drawing attack modifier card, you may place one character token on the target of the attack. When that enemy dies... Place one shadow token in or adjacent to the hex it occupied. 
So it has to be on someone Chris Roll is targeting, or the target of the attack. Uh, place a shadow token in or adjacent to the hex it occupied. Whenever you place a character token with this ability, remove any other character token placed with this ability. All right. Um, okay, and that is going to last for the rest of the scenario, and then the card goes lost. Strength of the Abyss. Once during each of your move or attack abilities, you may remove one shadow token within range three to gain one XP and add two move to your move ability or two attack to one of your attacks. And that will also last for the rest of the scenario. Counts as a lost card. Okay, uh, next round. All right, so if, she, if Crystal does even a basic attack on this Algux, guard likely to get a shadow token there but does she want to do that or does she want to target the priest perhaps uh, that priest is six health all right i feel like we have uh one of the big cards for chris roll is the eclipse card it's a card that goes lost but it does place three shadow tokens all at once. I feel like we're gonna wanna do that in the next room. And I feel like that's all going to be one uh, big room. So we're gonna wait on that for now. Um, but let's see, she does have a card or did we use it already? Oh yeah, place one shadow token within range two. So we need to, Let's see. She has some range. Um, Black Barrage, she can shoot at the priest with Black Barrage. We don't have any darkness yet, but that's kind of okay because we don't need the extra range. The extra attack would be nice. We also don't necessarily need the XP. We don't want to be getting a ton of extra XP. For it. Um, so that would target the priest and then call to the abyss to put a token on her so we get a shadow token right there which I think is going to be good for movement that way. So for a bottom action what do we want to do? She could move three and poison somebody within range one so adjacent. Um, loot one Teleport to a hex with shadow. We don't want to do that. Move three, make knight. Okay, well, knight is useful to her for a variety of things. Um, oh, this actually might be better because we could use the knight for the extra attack. Remove any number of shadow tokens on three for each remove, gain a bunch of extra stuff. Um, oh, but the pierce, the priest has armor. So getting the pierce from that is actually good. So I think we're going to go back to. We're going to leave this out here. And yeah, let's one, two would get her adjacent and poison it and then do a basic attack. Maybe that's what we do. Basic attack on the priest. I don't see any stronger melee attacks. So we'll hold that back. We're going to move forward. And um, going early. Going early would be that black barrage. Just do it as a basic attack rather than ranged. 
Be nice if she had a target all adjacent enemies. But she does, but it's as if you were occupying a hex with a shadow, and we're not occupying a hex with a shadow. Unless we put a shadow right down where we are, but we can't do that yet. Our only way to put down shadow tokens is Eclipse that I mentioned earlier. Call to the Abyss has a bottom place one, but we're doing the top. Um, so we could do this just for a basic move, just to go early. could bring out our sunless apparition but that's only if we have a shadow token down all right we're gonna do that go early and attack the priest just to get our target on him the so uh, Emmy needs to um, finish off this Algox guard And we can do that with tip of the spear, or we could do it with a basic attack. Uh, we do, you don't have any bottom attacks at level one. That would be nice to get a bottom attack. I am tempted, em Emmy does have a card, the Unbreakable Wall. The bottom of it is shield one for the whole scenario, but all of your ranged attacks have range minus one. It's two XP, but it lasts for the whole scenario. If she is our tank, that is tempting. Um, with this scenario, I don't know that we're going to have a ton of monsters all in a line. So... I think we're going to do set for the charge just as a basic attack um, to go early. And you know what? We're not really moving this turn, so this is a good time to bring out our reinforcements. Um, I can also summer the banner of strength, but I don't feel like this is the right place to do that. That banner of strength is kind of cool. But it doesn't move at all. Um, all allies within range 2 get plus 1 to their attacks. But I think that's more for your final... Once you know kind of the final disposition of the enemies, set up the banner of strength for that final fight. So instead we're going to do this. All right. So Emmy is on 0-6. And Crystal is on 14. And what are our enemies doing? Oh, the priest is going early, draining speed. Oh dear, that might actually be a problem. Because of this difficult terrain, Crystal might not be able to get there. But let's see what happens when we get to that point. Emmy goes first, summoning uh, our reinforcement. And we will put the reinforcement up here. And, uh, okay, so that reinforcement only has one health. We get to control how he moves, but he has no attack. So he's basically there just to help set up our, um, our attacks and such. And then, oh, what did I say? Nobody reminded me. Um, we don't want to do any basic actions. And here I did set for the charge as a basic attack. Oh, man. 
I already picked my cards. I already saw the enemy cards. Emmy doesn't want to do any basic attacks. Do I want to swap the two cards? No. No, I don't, because the top on the other one is healing all allies, and nobody needs healing yet. Uh, do I want to live with set for the charge? Whenever an enemy moves or teleports from a hex not adjacent to you to a hex adjacent to you this round, that enemy suffers two damage. Let's think about this. If I basic move, would that Algux guard come over to me and then die by taking the two damage? Oh, uh, let's think about this. If I move over to here, the Algrex Guard isn't going to move if Chrysril is there. The question is, is Chrysril going to be there? Who is the priest going to target? Move one, attack two, range three, immobilize. So if Emmy moves here, all of her, all of the priest's targets are range two away. And Emmy went first. So Emmy would be the target. Emmy would get immobilized. So Chrysril could move. Uh, Chrysril only has basic move. So Chris Roll would need to run further back so that the Algex Guard comes up. However, the Algex Guard is not moving now that I look at it. He does have move two, but he's throwing an axe at range two. So he's not going to move up adjacent to anybody. All right, I should have looked at that first. So set for the charge isn't going to help us this round because all three of the enemies are attacking at range. So I think we got to do the basic attack and just give up. <laughs> In round two, we're giving up on our battle goal. Oh, that's a shame. All right. Well, that's what you get for not thinking ahead. All right, so uh, I think I actually want to put my summon back up here, though, now that I think about it, just to keep the summon alive, uh, because otherwise the archer is just going to shoot it. So um, we did the bottom, and so now you are active, but you do not go lost. If you die, I can get you right back. Um, I do get an XP for bringing you in not two just one okay basic attack on the algex guard let's kill the guard unfortunately i have no way to um, eagle eye goggles make it at advantage but knock on wood let's at least be a plus zero plus zero so two damage to the algex guard and goes away. All right, no more Algex Guard. Let's put you back up there and drop a loot token. Okay, well, it was worth it. You stay there. I'm gonna just put you out here because don't even need to think about you anymore. All right. So, the uh, priest is moving one if needed, attack two, range three, and um, what is it? Uh, keep from moving. Okay, so range one, two, range one, two. So, has targets within range three, doesn't need to move. Those are uh same range and immobilize that's the word i was trying to think of going earlier in turn order is chris roll so chris roll is immobilized 
that sucketh, but we'll figure it out. All right. Um, and attack two. So we need to do that. Attack two minus one, so attack one on Chris roll. Okay. Um, even if we had used our boots of speed and Chris roll went either at zero four or two four, that would not have changed her comparison with the Algex guard. Okay. So that's the priest turn. Chris roll. You're immobilized. How does that change what we want to do on our cards here? All right, we have attack to range four, getting pierce. Uh, attack to range two, attack to range four. We don't have dark, so we can't hit it. Move all shadow tokens up to two, we don't have any. Wound, all enemies occupying a hex with shadow token don't have any so we can't really neither bottom card means anything to us so both top cards are basically attack to on the guard none of the extras happen so it almost it doesn't even matter which we pick she's doing attack to range two on the guard who does have or on the priest i keep saying guard on the priest who does have shield one attack two plus two is four minus one for the uh, shield, so three. All right. Well, that's something at least. And then basic cards discarded. Okay. Um, now it is the archer's turn. Move to attack to range five, immobilize. Um, one, two, three, four, five. Has a target within range five. Can't even see that target. Two, three, four, five. So uh, does not need to move to be able to attack from current hex. And by my understanding of the rules, even though theoretically Emmy is closer, she's hidden behind the wall, the archer doesn't know that. So the archer is going to shoot Chris roll. One, two, three, four, five. Crystal's already immobilized, so that's okay. Um, attack two. Minus one is one. All right, so she's our squishy. She's becoming a bit of a pincushion, but um, there you go. And we have no guard, and the city guard doesn't do anything. So that is the end of the round. All right, how are we doing? Everybody still with me? Cheering me on? wet the whistle here a little bit so uh, new round okay oh before I get too far though we did want to put um, did Chris roll she took her turn Yes, and so we do need to put the target token so that the guard, or the priest, when the priest goes down, we get a shadow token wherever the priest is. All right, can't forget that. All right. Now, we've got an archer and a priest. Banner spear can move two... How can we do anything to help with that? If we put the banner spear here and we get here, we can do a rallying cry on the priest. That seems like a good thing to do. Um, and we can do that with a basic move. And we don't care about basic moves anymore for Emmy. 
because we already did a basic attack. So uh, battle goal gone. All right. Um, we are, we are going to move to, and she's got a move and heal card, I think. That's heal on the top. We're going to play her loot. I thought, oh, it's a top heal. Yeah, regrouper's pretty powerful. But um, we need to move. So um, on 71, let's see. If she's here, throwing the javelin on a later turn would be good. Okay, so I feel like the archer is not going to move into melee with us. So, um, and unfortunately, we can't get the... Um, the reinforcement up behind us because that would be move three and he can only move two. Uh, but this is a good position for the rallying cry. Oh, no, it's not. Rallying cry is another opposed on either side. Hmm. All right. Well, never mind. So can we get set up for tip of the spear? All right, um, I hate to do this. I need to pause this because this is a call I really do need to take. Uh, hello. How are you doing? Um, give me just one second. I'll be right back, guys.
All right, I am back. I am so sorry about that. Um, that was actually my contact with Royal Caribbean. As, as I mentioned earlier, I run the uh, BGG at Sea Cruises, and that was a very important call I needed to get about our cruises uh, this summer. We're going to Alaska in the end of June for a week and uh, the first week of July. Uh, two different cruises. Still have about about 10 to 12 cabins left. We're almost sold out. And I just had to take care of some of that business. I've been trying to get a hold of them for a few days now. I apologize for the dead air. Let me check the chat here. Um, Joe asks, is the app a godsend when playing the Haven games? Absolutely. Um, now, when I'm playing face-to-face -face with a bunch of friends, I don't mind uh, the quote-unquote fiddliness of it. Um, you know, the tracking the monsters. We play Jaws of the Lion, my wife and I, my brother and his wife, we're almost done with Jaws of the Lion. And we don't use an app for that at all. Uh, tracking everything is not really that big a deal. A little bit of the tactile feel feels good, no problem. Uh, but when I'm playing solo here on the stream, the app consolidates so much table space that I can show a lot more uh, of what's going on using the app. And it is, even without the table space, a lot of people play with the app just to avoid some of the fiddliness of it. Um, so my answer is, I don't mind the fiddliness when I'm playing face-to-face, -face, but on stream, definitely need it uh, because it, I don't want to be losing time on the stream to fiddly and uh, also the, the table space. All right, Tanwin says, I'm going to sleep now, bedtime for me, but really importantly, you need to actually mute when you take a phone big call because you could be heard. Oh, okay. Well, I walked down the hallway. I thought this mic was a little more directional. It's okay, I wasn't revealing any secrets. We're dealing with group shore excursions kinds of things. There's no personal information in that. But thank you for telling me. Um, I'll remember that further. I'll close the door, watch. I thought this was a directional mic and you wouldn't hear me down the hallway, but it is a quiet building right now. And uh, so anyway, thanks. Thanks for that, Tanwin. Enjoy your sleep, dream well, dream of, of uh, town guard coming to your rescue in case any Algox archers show up. How about that? Uh, Joe says we never heard anything anyway, okay. Um, Rainer is raiding us. Oh, welcome. Yes, Frosthaven. Welcome, Rainer. We are doing a Frosthaven solo playthrough. Okay, let's get back into it. Where were we? Okay, I don't have initiative numbers up, so I think I was thinking of what to do this next turn. Um, and I realized right before I got the call that the, um, rallying cry movement I was going to do wasn't going to work. So, Tip of the spear, unbreakable wall. I kind of, I do want to get some loot tokens here. Um, and let's see. Emmy does not have a good basic melee attack. She's got a javelin that she can throw. Um, she does have... Uh, attack two, but if there's wind, you get advantage, and all attacks targeting you this round gain disadvantage. So there is that. Um, move one, and then push to range three. So could push the priest further away if she goes to step on that. Actually, if she does that, we can do tip of the spear. And that would take the, yeah, there we go. There we go. That's the combo we need. Emmy's going to move one and not push, but use tip of the spear because she's in the gray. Let me set this up here. Um, it would be just like this if Emmy's right here. We've got our ally in the blue. She's in the gray. One, two away we can get to the priest, as long as we get there before the priest moves. So, um, 
and we just won't do the push part of the javelin which means we don't really need we could do that with a basic move and I'm gonna save my javelin go even earlier on 15 and basic move to get onto that loot square okay when the priest dies hopefully this turn Chris roll will get a shadow token where the priest is what is she gonna do with that shadow token um, not a whole lot maybe maybe she needs to bring out her summon a shadow beast because uh, we don't really need her to do a lot this turn so that's gonna be her top card and then bottom card oh yeah let's let's make some night just for kicks because she could actually move on to I mean, maybe loot that square if she goes at the end all right so trying to pick up some speed here uh, we're going Emmy on 15 15 and Chris roll is gonna go late on 96 all right and then we will draw for everyone else oh you're kidding that priest going on nine wow angry hex the priest is going early all right well that's the first thing happening um tonwin says thank you i could hear actual phrase cap needs to know for next time. okay yeah okay um so move three attack one target two range three with curse oh now fortunately she's going to be cursing the ally deck even though there isn't really a deck but the guard um okay so target two she does have two targets within range three she actually has three targets within range three but the first tiebreaker is actual range and so these two are range two so she's going to target the town guard and chris roll or he the priest he she i don't know i don't know do algux even gender themselves i don't know the world building that much the priest targeting two so does not have to move so let's target the town guard first. So attack one plus one is two. So city guard takes two damage. Oh, but he has shield two. So it doesn't take any at all. Even better. Uh, can't retaliate because too far away. Um, and then targeting does curse the city guard though. However, I mean, it's. I don't think it's going to matter. I'm not. I don't want to draw. I don't know how to add. Actually, I can add the curse here. Maybe can I? Um. Yes. Add one curse card. Okay. And let's just draw from his deck until we get a reshuffle because we shouldn't have drawn from his deck at all okay we got a reshuffle and then hopefully that will end, get us to 21 cards when we get a new round i don't think he's going to need his card ever okay but chris roll is getting cursed right after this oh plus two that's three damage oh uh um she might because we haven't healed her yet and are we going to heal her anytime soon we could heal her next turn if all goes well we will heal chris roll and regenerate next turn so that's risky um what's the archer gonna do attack four range five one two three four five one two three four we'll target emmy first okay so we will risk it this might cost us the game but we're gonna risk it let crystal take that damage just not to lose cards yet 
and then heal her next turn. Uh, but Crystal is cursed. So uh, I can actually just add a curse card to her deck. All right, Chris Roll's deck now has curse in it. Not good, not so good. Okay, let's kill this annoying priest. Honestly, I could have just cut that in a couple of times, but overshuffling. Okay, so we are basic move to get on here to set us up for tip of the spear. This is attack three, pierce three, so the priest's shield won't matter, and we'll get one XP for that. Oh, I just want to go to Emmy's turn. No miss, no miss, no miss. Minus one, that's still enough because... Uh, is it? Oh, it's not. Because it is attack three. So that is two damage. And that priest had three. Darn it. Um... Our summon was supposed to go first, but we intentionally did not move the summon so that we have this geometry. Okay. So even though we took out, he's still got one health left. So that means Crystal's not going to be able to move into that space and we don't get our shadow token. Unless Crystal just basic moves up and basic attack to kill him. That's probably what we just need to do. If we do that, that puts the same within range of our archer, but the archer is going to shoot at Emmy who went first. So uh, that's what we will do. Okay. I think that is it for Emmy's turn. City Guard does nothing. Algux archer. Oh, the archer goes before Crystal moves anyway. One, two, three, four. That's the closest range. It has range five. So attack four. Yikes. Um... We do have a shield up here that we haven't used yet. And we're going to need it because that's attack five. We will use our shield. So take four damage. One, two, three, four. All right. Oof. I, let's, let's hope this next door is just a city full of townsfolk greeting us happily. I'm sure these were the only bad guys we had to deal with, right? We can hope. All right, Chris Roll's turn. Uh, we, she was going to summon, but I really think we need to just kill that, uh, that priest. Um, yeah. Basic move, basic attack. So, so it's both movement points to move up onto that uh, <coughs> difficult terrain. And basic attack. Please give us zero or more. It's a zero. All right, so that's two. Has shield. So one gets through and the priest is gone. All right, and because the priest is gone, this character token turns into a shadow token and also a loot token. Oh, we forgot at the end of Chris's turn, we should have done end of turn looting. So let me go back up here, make Chris, I'm sorry, Emmy, the active player, 
and draw from the loot deck. There. Two metal, it looks like. Yep, two metal. Very good. Emmy has two metal. She got two metal last time, too. She's getting ready to get some armor or something. All right. Um, so that was Chris's turn. Um, okay. Doing fine XP wise because she's just, just doing basic stuff. So let's go next round. All right. All we have to deal with is one archer. Um, shadow token there. The guard is just not moving. Okay. Um, one, two, three. Banners or reinforcement is right here. One, two, three to do anything like that. So I unfortunately I can't get oh that's what we yeah, we're absolutely healing Chris. Y'all need to remind me. Emmy needs to heal Chris. Okay. So needs to she can do it now before moving. Um And then that's attack five adjacent. Um, range. If we send Chris over to attack that, does she? She has some range stuff. Range three. But it goes lost. I feel like I'm going to need that in the next room. All right, that archer is going to be out here for one whole more turn. Unless we just run on past. But we can't run past because we need to defeat all enemies. And we can't just leave the guard to do it because the guard only attacks on a retaliate. And the archer is unlikely to ever get up there to retaliate. Could we maybe block for one more turn. That archer's had pretty good range so far. He hasn't had to move at all. Um, I could throw a javelin at the archer. Um, To attack the archer where he is, I mean, if I get up in his face, he's going to have disadvantage. Um, I don't have any good movements. All I have is basic moves or the move one and push two. Basic move to here and throw the javelin and then just take the hit back um, or I could basic move with jump to get onto the loot and Emmy move three just to get further away do you have a move three? you have a move four we could actually open the door I, I, I don't feel awesome about leaving an enemy behind us. Oh, plus one range. Can she move early? Yeah, she could do this early which is basically nothing. Basic move two to there. Basic move two to there. And just let the reinforcement go be cannon fodder. That seems um, heartless, but that might be what he's there for. Because if 
you jump over here, it's going to be a while before the reinforcement can get around. So we'll do that on 25, and we'll do this on 19. Um, I want a clips for when we get into the next room. We do have one shadow token down now. Um, is there anything that we can do on the top from a shadow token? Oh, oh, we could do this. Oh, oh, yes. We can do this. Even better. All right. We can move that shadow token and then attack as if we were there on 24. Yep. All right. And then put a shadow token out there on him. Um, we could have put this shadow token adjacent to here. It did not have to be here. That's okay. We're going to move it anyway. All right. We know what we're doing. Emmy is 25 and Chris Roll is 24. And let's see what the Archer is. 32. Um, okay. Only range three. I thought, I wondered if there were any lower range cards. But there we go. So Chris Roll. Um, move a shadow token up to five hexes. So we're gonna move it from that loot token to this loot token. And then attack five. Perform the attack as if you were occupying a hex with a shadow token, then remove the shadow token. We're gonna create knight and we're gonna get an XP out of that. And we're going to attack five, and that does not go lost. Minus one is four. Oh, man, just one off both times. Can't catch a break. <clears throat> All right. Oh, and I should have used our boots of speed, so we went even faster. I didn't think about it. Oh, we can actually decide that after we see the initiative of the monsters. Um, during order of initiative, after all ability cards have been revealed, increase or decrease your initiative by 10. So we could change it but uh, to go after the Algox Archer, but we're obviously not going to. Um, yeah. Okay, that was Chris Roll's turn. Emmy's turn. Basic move. Oh, our, oh are we still... Um, before Emmy goes, um, I, that's why I kept forgetting our summon here. I need to add our reinforcements. So he's up there to remind us to move him. Okay. So he moves there. Now he's in range three. It's somebody for the archer to shoot at. Emmy moves to heal to range two with regenerate. So Chris roll heals to and gets regenerate. So she'll get one more every turn uh, that until she takes damage. Okay. Did that, and this was just a basic move. Okay, and then the archer, one health left, moves two if he needs to, but he can attack four, range one, two, three, so shoots at our reinforcement. Minus one is two, that's still enough to kill the reinforcement. But it does not go lost. He just comes into our discard pile. We can bring him back after we take a rest after next turn. All right. Um, 
Hold on. Okay, I did notice the Town Guard's deck is 21 now, as it should be, because there's a curse card in there. Um... That was round four. Okay. Um, our Deathwalker, Crystal, has too many cards left up here. Unless, did I leave an X in the game? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, that's what it is. I set up a bottom thing and I pulled it back up. Yes, I set up Strength of the Abyss. And somehow I pulled it back up into my top up here. So three cards left, two cards left. They're both resting uh, after the next turn if needed. Um, okay. Emmy, end of turn looting, we forgot to do. So... Emmy, active player, and loot deck. Two hides. Nice. Okay. Now, we can move on because... Oh, this actually, we can't move on. This went away. Um, I was going to say she could attack from any shadow token, but we actually lost that shadow token. However... We did use our call to the abyss. We targeted her and so put a token on the archer. All right, I think that is the end of the round. Okay, how are we doing over here? Um, Joe, I do have to kill everything to achieve the objective. He asks, you don't have to kill everything to achieve the objective. I do. Um, and I was just going to let that archer come up and we clean him up later. But uh, we are going to uh, kill him now. And did we heal? Uh, we healed Crystal and regenerated. Okay. Emmy has not healed herself yet. She's 6 out of 10. Crystal is 3 out of 6. Okay, but our summon did die, so take him off. He does not drop a loot token. All right, so we still do need to deal. This stupid archer has one health point. Otherwise, I want to move on and open that door. What should we do? Uh, throw our javelin at him? Um, yeah, I guess we'd have to move one. So basic move, throw the javelin. Uh, easy enough. And then that lets Chris Roll get up closer to opening the door. Um, does she actually open the door? Uh, no, because one, two, three, she moves three and then just nothing for top card, but move on 19 and then we'll rest up right before we open the new room. Okay. So, Chris Roll, 19, Emmy, 21. Uh, Archer, shoot foot. Okay, but after Emmy. So, hopefully, Emily's javelin is going to do what it needs to do. Okay, Chris Roll, 19. Uh, basic move, 3. 1, 2, 3. And does not poison or cannot even poison the town guard because the town guards are our ally. Doesn't do anything with the top card. All right. Discard. And we've saved our eclipse for the new room. Okay. Uh, javelin. So basic move, just slide back one so that we are in three of uh, range. Unless, do we want to get shield for the big room? That means we'd have to move one more because it would take down our range. No, we can't. Duh. I need that basic move to move the one space. Never mind. All right. Attack three, range three. One, two, three. Just don't be the miss. Plus one is four. Super overkill. 
and we create a shadow token for our friend Chris Roll. And a loot token drops as well. All right. Um, so the archer takes four damage. One's enough to take it away. Now, next round. Okay. Does anybody want to long rest or do we just short rest both of you? Um, Chris Roll has not used her Boots of Speed yet, so there's no reason to untap it. The oh, We do need to heal one, though, because regenerate and she hasn't taken damage, so she did take a turn. So remind me to regenerate whenever she gets her turn. Wrong direction. There we go. Oh, we need to take off that immobilize. That was... She lost that at the end of her turn. She was stuck up here and, and didn't move that turn, so that's fine. All right. Uh, I think it's only been one turn since she got healed. Actually, yes. Yeah. This turn, because she went before Emmy last turn. Okay. Um, so... Long resting, Emmy could long rest. She could use the health. It'd be nice to get her shield back. But timing wise, Chris Roll would just be spinning her thumbs or spinning her wheels, twiddling her thumbs. And I feel like we just want to move in unless. You know, it actually in this situation it doesn't cost us anything to let them both long rest because there's no enemies on the board right now we're not going to open the new room yet and as far as i know per the scenario there's no clock that we're up against um, nothing is keeping track of the rounds so both characters long rest that's because why not right doesn't cost us anything all right, we have a first-time chat here. Guido, is Frosthaven a Gloomhaven expansion they look alike? Frosthaven is basically Gloomhaven number two. It's a sequel. Um, it's everything Gloomhaven was plus about 10 to 20% more in terms of gameplay. There's a little more aspect of in-between scenarios on the board. But yes, it is very much uh, same designer, same company. Um, it's not an expansion. It's a whole new base game. But welcome. First time chatter with us. Good to, uh, good to have you with us. Let me see. And hello. Looks great. Mind if I lurk? Well, you're not lurking anymore. You've chatted. So uh, you, you can go back to lurking if you'd like. Uh, please uh, stay pull up a chair and uh, hey, if you see, uh, if you have any suggestions for me, uh, jump right in and tell me what I'm doing wrong or experience it with us uh, as we go along. Okay, so it's decided both characters are gonna long rest, which makes it easy. We don't really have to do anything. Um, so we get to untap and I'm not, I mean, we can go through the motions here. Uh, next round. Chris Roll is 99, Emmy is 99, and we'll draw a card. And our city guard doesn't do anything, uh, and we take our turns. So um, Chris Roll heals, actually heals up to full health because she gets two for the long rest and one for the regenerate. And then Emmy is going to heal two as well. Oh, she was. She would have healed uh, the regenerate. She didn't do anything. I, just, I thought she was three out of six. She's four out of six. Uh, we get our equipment comes back, and then we get to decide which card goes lost. All right. Um, we're probably going to want to summon our reinforcement again. We're probably going to need to heal uh, Chris Roll again. I'm guessing. Um, we might want the banner of strength. Tip of the spear, maybe, maybe not, but probably the move four. Um, 
Deflecting Maneuver. All right. Uh, it's an early card. It's attack to melee, but we need wind. Attacks targeting you gain disadvantage. And then we on the bottom, it's shield two, but only for one round, and it's only ranged attacks. There's going to be a lot of ranged attacks. Um, I feel like that's a contender to go lost. Pincer movement, combined effort. Yep. I'm not going to think too much further about it. So deflecting maneuver goes lost. We didn't really use that one in the first cycle. It, we, that was a uh, basic uh, move or basic attack. I can't remember which. All right. Set our cards up on our nice handy uh, card holder. Uh, here, we sell these in the BGG store, keep components in the middle, keep all your cards, two rows. I love these things. Uh, they're available in the BGG store. Okay, that's enough for a plug for today. All right, what does Chris Roll want to have go lost? Um, oh boy, we, we want to get a lot of shadow tokens out. Dark Fog, I think, well does let us move a shadow token up to five hexes, but that top area effect is not, I feel like is not gonna be good in this one. Um, move three, sh summon the shadow beast. That's a pretty powerful card. Um, Black barrage. Yeah, we'll just anger the dead. I don't want to think about it too much further. Um, that will be the card that goes lost. All right. Okay, so uh, that was our long rest turn, and we'll now set up for next round. All right. Uh, we don't know what's in this room. Somebody needs to move a bunch and drop some shadow tokens. So there's actually a pretty awesome card. Shadow Step for Chris Roll. Move six and then place one shadow token in the hex you are occupying. Now it goes lost, but I think we're going into our final room. Uh, just kind of the way the geometry is and the kind of the overlay tiles I have available leads me to believe this is going to be all one room and so we'll get to see the whole thing and we'll drop three shadow tokens while we're there just kind of flood the board with all of our shadow tokens now both cards go lost but we're setting up for some big fights all right uh she can go fairly early doing that in fact she can go as early as nine if we use our boots of speed um Emmy needs to come in, so she needs some movement, and then probably throw a spear if somebody's within range three before we get our uh, reinforcement out. So she's going to go on six, and she's actually going to open the door. Oh, is she? One, two, three, four. Yes, yeah, she's going to get right to the door because that she has to go around that. Um, right to the door and oh you know what how awesome would it be if there were some enemies right here that we could use tip of the spear with but we'll find out we can't count on it um we'll see whether that city guard is useful or not okay so uh emmy is on six and as of right now, Chris rolls on 19. We might shift that down to 9, but we'll see. All right. And so far, we don't need to draw anything. But let's find out. Let me just check up the chat over here real quick. I don't want to hold you up from playing or distract from current viewers, so please answer next question when you can. No hurry. Okay. 
How does this one play solo? I like Gloomhaven as duo more because of the secretness of what people are going for and whatnot. In this one, does it have the same aspect or does it play solo without ruling that hidden, ruining that hidden factor? Um, so that hidden factor is ruined. I'll just come out and say it. Um, now, the counterpoint to that is I'm managing two characters. And so I have to think about how two different characters work and um, how to play them appropriately. Um, but the, the hit, I am, as you can see, I'm very much playing them together and knowing what they're going to do. I know how well they work with each other. Now, it depends on your play style with your group, with the other person you play with. Um, when I'm playing with my wife and brother and his wife, we very much talk about, okay, I'm going early or I'm going super early or I'm on the early side of mid, you know, because you can't share the actual number that you're playing. But we generally have a pretty good feel for what everybody's going to do. Um, obviously, what the hidden monsters are going to do, I don't know until I reveal that. So there's still a lot of fog of war in what the monster cards are. Uh, but it is a little bit ruined in that I know what my whole team is going to do because I am the whole team. That being said, I think it still plays awesome solo. It's a great experience. Um, and it's, it's the same rules as, uh, as Gloomhaven was. Um, you are meant to play the scenario at a higher level if uh, at a slightly higher level when you're playing solo. The calculation for the scenario is adjusted just a little bit so that sometimes it'll be at a higher level. Um, since I am increasing the difficulty by streaming, I am not going to do that generally. I'm going to play it as if we were two level one characters playing independently. Um, and so I'm, I'm cheating a little bit on the easy side but uh, there you go. All right. Hope that answers your question. And follow up. Uh, I like that as far as I also meant as far as goals for scenarios. Like I need gold and X player needs to kill monsters. Okay. Yeah. Battle goals. I know what both battle goals are. Uh, it's cooperative. Um, in... in uh, Frosthaven, your personal quest is your choice whether to make it public or not. I know in, in Gloomhaven it was meant to be kept secret, um, but in the Frosthaven rules it does say you can make it public or not your choice. I've obviously made it public. They both know what they both need. Okay. Um... Moving four. One, two, three, four. Um, and opening the door. So we need to read paragraph. When door one is open, read 5.3. All right. So let me get our scenario book, or our section book over here. Five point three. You run inside the gate, and the breadth of destruction becomes quickly apparent. The town has been sacked. Smoke burns your eyes. What structures still stand are bright with fire, and the rest smolder. Their frames like black torched skeletons. And all about the wreckage howl the Algox, celebrating their victory in an unrecognizable language. And we have our map here. So let me lay this out real quick. I don't want to, uh, actually I don't want to show the whole book because there's paragraphs for other uh, scenarios in here. And I'm good enough not to read what I should but I don't know if I can trust the rest of you. So we need some rubble here. And then we have debris.
3, which is difficult terrain. So this is obstacle, cannot go across that space. This is difficult terrain. Rubble. And there is a basic, a regular algox right there, and more rubble up here. All right, loot tokens galore. We d this is all one room, so let me set that up. Basically create our zipper here to bring these two tiles together. All right, snowy corridors in place. Okay, um, another regular Algux guard right on the other side here. And then more rubble next to him. And loot. And large rubble or debris, whichever one's which, up there. Rubble. Rubble, rubble. Loot. And loot, and more um, obstacle up here. And it told me to pull two of them. No. Yeah, two of them, but I've only used one. Oh, I used another one over here, so that one's extra. Okay. We've got all of those out where they need to be. Now, let's see, loot tokens. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. I've got all the loot tokens. I need a priest, except he's elite now. Elite priest right here. No, I'm sorry, that's the archer. That's the archer. Okay, so I've got that bad guy. I've got this bad guy. And I've got this bad guy. The priest is down here. And that's it. Boy, I like playing two-player because there's a lot more monsters on here, but only because there'd be a lot more players. And we have two town guard. I'm not going to worry about bases for them um, because they don't move. Uh, they don't have stats or anything like that. So put them up there. Okay. All right. Um, Joe asked a great question. What happens to the loot if you leave it behind? It is left behind. When the scenario ends, um, it uh, just ends. Um, any loot you didn't pick up just was never there to begin with. So usually or sometimes you'll wait to kill the last monster for a one more turn to let you grab one more loot token 
or something like that, or somebody kills the last monster, you still finish the scenario. Everyone else goes grab loot, but then it's done. All right, so our banner spear has moved four and wants to throw his javelin. Nobody is in range of three. One, two, three, one, two, three. So that is truly unfortunate. Um, okay. So the spear was wasted, but that's okay. We got other stuff to do. We've only got, well, we've got four enemies to deal with. All right. Um, now, uh, so we need to add elite archer, number one. Came up on 64. We need to add priest, number one. 23 and we need to add guard five and six on 15 so Chris roll is going to activate her boots of speed actually no doesn't matter I don't think it really matters um, the guards are not going to move. They simply parry and thrust, shield, and retaliate. So no effect. So Emmy's had her turn. Guards take their turn because they got no enemies close enough. And Chris roll. All right. Move six and drop down one where you are and three more within three. All right. She has a pretty nice attack. Let's see. We've lost our knight. Um, we're not going to be... Oh, and we, we will be creating knights. Which means attack all adjacent enemies. Perform the attacks as if you were occupying a hex with knight. I think that's what we're going to do next. Um, or attack three poison. That's even better. Perform the attacks as if you were occupying a hex with... Oh, that's from one single hex. Um, we could attack three or poison two of them, or we could attack one, muddle all of them, and that actually uses the knight. So we'll probably do that first and then see whether or not the archer and priest actually move or not. So... One, two, three, four. Wouldn't it be awesome to end on a loot token down here? One, two, three, four, five, six. That's getting her awful close to the priest. Is only going to heal, so not attacking. And the archer. Ooh, power shot. Attack five, range five. Wow. If Emmy moves all the way up to there, that could kill her. Well, no, we're going to just soak that up uh, with a card going lost. It's late enough in the game. We're going to do it. So she moves to here and then drop one, two, three. Oh, if she goes to there. Uh, let's think about this. We can't get next to all the all the baddies within range three. So I kind of want to I want to drop that one. I want to drop this one, and I want to drop this one for sure. Now, if she just runs to here and drop one there. She's still within range, Punkishan of the Archer. Um, this guy's not going to move this turn, and she can run away next turn. So, yeah, we'll do that. So, those two cards go lost. That's a bunch of lost cards all at once. 
we know there's going to be another one from the archer but that's okay she's looting and she really needs lumber i don't know if there's any lumber in this deck but let's hope she gets some lumber no that looks like a hide uh no it is a snow thistle she's got an herb all right that's kind of cool okay now the algox priest move to heal three range three all right so trying to remember does the priest doesn't ha have anybody needs to heal is not doing an attack but i think still finds a focus and moves as if doing a melee attack try and remember those um, Yeah, any monster with disarm or without an attack ability finds a focus and moves as if for a single target melee attack. All right, so as if a single target melee attack. Um, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, just moves three. Uh, so he's going to move up to uh, Chris Roll, but just moves two, trying to get to this space. Now, um, has nobody to heal, so we move on. Okay, city guard does nothing. Actually, hold on, hold on. Would this guard be any closer? Well, that's difficult terrain. So it would be one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, yep. So three is still, still closer. All right. Oh, it'd be nice if these guards would get a little closer to help us defend the town. Kind of useless. Oh, that's all right. And Algox power shot. So has multiple targets within range five, but the first tiebreaker is current range and Chris roll is only game range two. So night. attack Nikki, five. Myself, Dave, are going to teach and play Minus Peter. one is four. For one to four players, published by Amigo, hmm, it's and only four. By Uwe Do Rosenberg. we chance it again? I am not sure um, what's really going on on this cover here. She's going to run guys, away. But, uh, she loses. I think you're going to find out. But you'll see the game. If she takes her. damage, she uses hey, her, hey, loses her regeneration. But awesome. I've got it back. <laughs> Let's go. And in fact, fever is Emmy could heal her for three. Game, uh, from Weeby Rosenberg. Or for two who? with three <laughs> Uwe Rosenberg. Really? Yes. This is an Uwe Rosenberg game? And it's not polarizing no. on the And I don't normally do this, but spoiler alert, <laughs> I love um, this game. We'll get into this at the end. <laughs> okay. We, uh, you know what? We get She's going to take the four. The and the gist of the game and is then that the start player, which in this case we'll is the two. Boards actually have a one, two, oh, wow. three on them. The sticks. Yep. The start player so is that goes going away. to, all the turns are the same. So on your turn, you're going right. to start with four She's dice. She's running away. On your turn, She's going to do a big attack. Dice. And hey, uh, this with is all not going to surprise anyone. If you've uh, ever played awesome Yahtzee, here. the game that we always like to refer to for this mechanic. There you go. Okay. So that was the... And then uh, you archer's can attack. And keep that roll, or you can re no, and the archer has eight health because he's okay. a leap. After now. your second roll, you That's can stop and keep that roll, or you can re roll any of your four dice that you All have, right. which is to say there's nothing that's Next round. To just sure. something aside. Okay. After your third roll, so we you got are going Emmy's to mostly running be away done and is going to muddle You're gonna use all the four dice adjacent enemies. To take one of these tulip field tiles which and is place all it somewhere. Okay. No, you will always oh, take always a tile, okay. and you will always get to place it. Um, where you get to place it might not be where you um, want it. All right? The exception to this is that you can get uh, two extra rolls. You can you can roll a fourth time, and if you want, you can roll a fifth And she's going to pull up. All right? But to up. do that, you have to turn over two of the fields that you already so you have on your board. either move further now, or attack further. we already start with 
Nikki and I each start with three fields on our board. And so I feel Lincoln like those fields. are going to be our three so top cards. If we wanted to, on the very first turn and of the game, those will be our three bottom cards. If I cards. didn't like my third roll, I could flip these two over, right? Um, and I could roll again. And um, when you roll the again, the same rules apply. You can roll any dice you want to re-roll. Oh, right? teleport to a hex. We're not going to do that probably on our first turn. You're going to want to save those for later. But oh, you could how cool is that? To. I could With a roll shadow a fifth token. time because I only have one. But if I had a second one oh, this and is I cool. wanted to flip it, this I could then roll cool. a fifth time. All right. Five is the maximum Hopefully number this is early roll. enough. So you can never get more than two extra re-rolls. Okay? How do we just want to... So, what is Just it take you out are that doing archer with these dice, completely. and what is it you are trying to do? Let's go over here. So mm -hmm. this is the four-player board, and you'll notice that the boards are seated differently because uh, Tulpen Fever is a race game. So arguably, yeah, the start I think we want to go early. Has a slight advantage in that I might get to victory twenty-four before you guys do, and then we're going to run away, but she can still fight. Mm -hmm. Right? Oh. And I think the balance is actually really good. Shadow fact, markers, I actually even prefer all the way to back be here. the later players. This, this is going to be mm -hmm. cool. All right, so Let's talk about what you're gonna we do. don't so need to heal Emmy as or uh, Chris roll as long as she goes early enough. Dice. And then when you're done, so let's say this is my final roll. All right, that's my I wasn't roll. talking let's to say you. This is my final roll. Um, okay. right. If she I'm runs away. The colors, by the way, then Chris really needs, or I'm sorry, Emmy really needs her. And I'm uh, going to place it I keep calling on any space that I can cover with the I need roll. to stop that. In this that. case, I need if to I do wanted better. to, I could cover here two sixes, or I could cover two fours. All right? And if I had already covered two sixes and two Game fours, night is playing is in the roll, background. I would take this tile. I'm going to do it over here. Game this night. Point. I would take this tile, and Where I would place it above my board for purposes. Let's move this a little bit this way. I would place this above my board up here. That's where they want you to place it. That's a re-roll potential reroll. Correct, thing. because when you flip tiles over to reroll, you can put right. any tiles you Sorry want. Sorry about that. Let me kill that. Here. I don't know why. Well, I, I do know why that happened. I left a tab open I shouldn't have. Okay. That's my bad. It should be fixed. All right. As I said earlier, I'm still a little new at this. I uh, apologize for the rookie mistakes, but uh, we'll get there. Okay, so um, can you do anything without that reinforcement? Move four. One, two, three, four. Need one more. Need to move five. Um. Actually, if she goes early enough and just teleports out of there, then we can summon our reinforcement. Um, and we can heal ourselves. That's what we'll do. Okay. And give ourselves regenerate. Not that it's going to last very long, but... So, Emmy, 25, and Chris Roll, 24. All right. Oh, no. The priest and the guard are going early, but Chris Roll can go earlier than that. Um, she has not used her boots yet. Does she want to? Well, even with that, she can't go before the priest. Priest... Target two, range three. So it's going to move over to be able to get Emmy as well. Uh, solved, no problemo, and we are forever learning, Jeff. Yes, we are. We are always learning. All right. Um, okay, so Priest moves here so that you get within range three of both of those. It's not a big attack, though, but it is a curse. All right, we'll live with that. I mean, we have no choice. Um, going before the guard doesn't matter because she's just going to... That guard is just parry and thrust again, and she's going to teleport away. 
So I don't think she's going to use her boots yet. All right. Priest goes first. Uh, move up to three. Only has to move one to get two targets within range three. Attack one with curse. So attack uh, Chris roll with curse. Ooh, that's two damage with curse. Can she take the two damage? She can't. That would kill her. Uh, um, so a card's going lost. Darn it. Darn it, darn it, darn it. Okay. Um, dark Fog going lost because we can't afford to take that damage. Uh, no, two out of our discard pile. Two out of the discard pile. I don't have two in the discard pile. Everything's in the lost pile. One card out of the hand, go lost. Avoid the damage. All right, we really needed something other than a plus one on that turn, but we do get another curse. And I'll grab one for Chris while we're at it. Or for Emmy. Keep saying Chris. All right, we need to get going here. I was hoping to be done by this time. All right, and a curse for Emmy. Because about to shoot Emmy for, uh, what is it, one damage. Plus zero. Well, good. We took the damage before we healed ourselves and gave regenerate. So, okay. So Emmy takes one damage. All right. That was the priest's turn. The guard's turn. Shield one, retaliate two. So don't attack the guards this turn. Definitely at melee. Chris. All right. Um, attack five. Perform the attacks as if you were occupying a hex with a shield or a shadow. Then remove the shadow. Create knight. All right. So we're going to attack the archer from here. And we're going to remove a uh, shadow token, this one, within range three, to give us an XP and add two to the attack. So this is attack seven. Um, so we get an XP from there. We get an XP from there. So we do get two XP, which is still OK. We just have to be seven or less to get our battle goal. So we're attacking from here, seven on the archer, which uh, who does not have shield. So attack seven, and it's the curse card. I was going to say don't be the curse, and then I was going to have to knock on wood, and I didn't want to knock on wood. And so that cost us. Oh, that hurts. Oh, I hate that. That's the curse card. Well, what are you going to do? Just makes it a little more difficult. Um, okay. Um, loot one, teleport to a hex with a shadow token. So we're getting out of dodge to come to here and loot that hex because we can still attack with two more cards from up here. And, um, oh, can we, can we really leave Emmy behind to deal with all this? I was, I was going to do it if we had weakened the archer, but losing that archer, oh, that hurts. Oh, that hurts. Um, 
So you can always teleport back. Because neither of their cards go lost. All right, so yeah, she can teleport back if needed. We do loot. All right, so this is Chris, and she gets a hide. All right. Oh, I need some uh, goggles of advantage. What are they called? Whatever the goggles that give you advantage to be able to avoid cards like that. Yeah, damn those curses. Absolutely right. All right, Emmy is healing herself and giving regenerate because now that's the only ally within two. I mean, she could heal the guard, but the guard doesn't. Actually, that guard did take some damage, I think. No, I don't think he has, but we do need to add... Guard three and six for some reason. All right, uh, so that was the top. And then bottom is summon reinforcement. All right, so let's get you out here. I think that's a safe place. I don't see much action happening on that edge of the board. Um, and we will put you back here for now. Yeah. Okay. Um, oh, that archer was supposed to be dead. One, two, three, four. No, we're going to put you up behind just to keep you alive for one extra turn. Um,. Or do I want you to take the hit for Emmy? Because that's attack five. She's got a shield. Well, and she is up at health, but that's going to take her to regenerate away. Uh, but I need you there to help with all of these, all of these melee attacks. Yeah, I need you there. All right. Hmm. So we'll take it. All right. Archer coming in. Move one if you need to. Range four. One, two, three, four. Um, so attack five, we need a curse card in your deck plus zero. So that's five damage. Do we have two cards that we can just go lost? Yeah, we're just going to let these two go lost. No, we're going to do one from the hand because I have five up here in the hand right now. And I feel like one lost up there. We'll live with four. Okay. And then the city guard does nothing. Good for nothings. All right. Next round. Okay. So we can muddle all adjacent enemies, attack one, or we can attack three on those two enemies. No, I'm going to do this first because that one doesn't go lost then. All right, so this was discard, discard, I didn't move these over. All 
right, so Crystal's going on 28 as of right now. And then over here, I feel like we want to set up combined effort. I can't get combined effort. I can get tip of the spear. Pincer movement would be nice. But too far away to do that. Unless we go late. And we are going kind of late. Oh, I can do it this way. Yeah, one, two. Because if you're moving to one, two, three, four, no. We could get to combined effort, but that's the card that has combined effort on it. We could do rallying cry, and that would be disarm. There's one, two, three, one, two, three, four. Yeah. All right. So 32. And let's see what we get. Oh, those guards are just doing nothing but parry and thrust. Wow. All right, so guards, done. Priest. Um, does Christopher want to go before the priest? Um, doesn't matter because all he's doing is healing. But he is going to move as if... He were doing a basic melee attack, which is going to bring him right to Emmy. So we won't go first. All right, so move to one, two. Actually, we'll put him here. And then heal three. He's got nobody to heal. Every, all these enemies are still full health. We haven't done any damage yet, which is not a good sign. Not not good for the home team. All right. So that was the August Priest. Chris Roll is um, move all shadows up to two. Well, if I put him up there, I could attack the priest. Yeah. Because um, we are muddling. Yeah, we are putting him up here. So one, two... We're going to ignore that guard out there for a little while and one, and then we're going to move this one to closer just for kicks. All right. Um, attack all adjacent enemies. And, and attack one as if you were occupying a hex with a blah. Um, so we're attacking these two enemies. I want, does retaliate go through the shadow? I need to look that up in the FAQ because she's attacking as if she were here. So is she going to take retaliate from the guard, the Algox guard? Um... I'll have to look that up later. I don't want to look it up now. So that being the case, uh, the archer hasn't gone yet. Oh, and we definitely want to muddle the archer. The archer's going to kill us. So we're attacking there. So it's just one. I'm going to remove this one to make it attack three on one of the attacks, so on the attack on the archer. Get an XP. 
So attack archer at three, plus one is four. Well, that is something. And then on the guard, shield one. Um, yeah. Plus zero, so no damage. And the retaliate two would kill Crystal, so I'm going to rule for now because we completely whiffed on our huge attack on the archer, I'm going to round in our favor and look it up later to see whether that retaliate goes through the shadow. I don't think it would, because she's not actually there. But we'll look it up later. All right. So that was... Crystal's turn. Emmy. What are you doing? Um, okay, we need to hurt this priest. Um, and wounding the priest would be nice. So first, we're going to do this. And we're going to... That was our reinforcements turn. Um, which I never summoned. Because I keep forgetting to do that. Okay, and now we're set up for combined effort. Three with wound. I need a good one here. Give me a good one. That curse. How did I shuffle those cards both to the top? But the wound does still come into play, so priest is wounded. All right. Now, summon the banner of strength or basic move. Should have summoned it first, but it actually doesn't matter whether I summoned it first or not because we missed. But we're going to summon it here. It has to be an adjacent square, so there. All right. So the banner is up. And that one does go lost. All right. Guards, good for nothing. Um, Archer. Move five, or five, target five. One, two, three, four. They're all within range. That one is going, they're all one, two, three, four away. So targeting our reinforcements. Minus two, three damage, still enough to kill him. All right, next round. Um, Crystal is short resting. Boy, this is not looking good. Crystal's not going to have very many turns. Um, okay, we can let that go lost. All right, we got our Fluid Knight back. And we're going to try it again, even though there's not... Oh, we can teleport. Teleport back in? Yes. We're going to do that and attack big. Try and take that archer down. Um, go out in a blaze of glory, right? Right. Okay. Um, pincer movement. That guard over there is not going to move. I'm actually set up for the no I'm not because that's on both sides tip of the spear oh 
if she teleports there, I could come over here. Yes. All right. We're going to do it. It's going to be late, but it is what it is. So, um, Chris roll is 24. Emmy is 67. I mean, we might not even be alive, but let's see what we have. Chris Roll goes first. Emmy's going to go last. So if Chris Roll survives, oof, I don't know if she is. But first thing she does is loot one. So she gets a loot token. Um, Emmy should have gotten her regenerate. She did not take damage that turn. All right, uh, Chris Roll, active player, loot. Lumber, that's two lumber, but it's one lumber card. I need to look at, let me look at this real quick. Personally loot eight total lumber cards. I'll have to look to see whether that counts as two cards or it just gives us two lumber resources. Is that one card or two? Look that up later. All right. And then teleport to a hex with a shadow token. So teleport there. All right. She's probably going to die. Um, and then attack five. Perform the attack as if you were occupying a hex with a shadow token, then remove the shadow token. So from this hex, attacking the archer, removing this shadow token to give us plus two. So it's attack seven. Uh, create knight and gain one XP. She's up to five now, but she's going to go out in a blaze of glory here. Um, I don't even want to say it, but there is one more curse card in there and a miss. Knock on wood. Here we go. Give me at least a plus one. It's a minus one. Well, at least it was damaged. So it's six damage on the archer. Oh, we had already damaged the archer. Oh, let's go the right direction. The archer is dead. All right, finally, some good news. All right, now I really need you to stay put uh, or stay alive at least so that we can get our pincer movement. All right, um, we did the rest of all that here. We do have two cards to go lost and we have two cards in the discard pile so she could survive to be cannon fodder. Oh, she actually has one more attack because of the banner of strength. Banner of strength is plus one on attack. Okay, so she was attacking base eight. All right, but archer dead. Guard, move three, attack three. All right, well, which guard goes first? This guard goes number five, move three. Uh, one, two, three, four, five to attack this town guard. The summon is killed. Um, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. And one, two, three. All right, so Chris is closest. Um, so one, two, three. And then attack three. Uh, plus zero is three. That would kill Chris, but we need Chris for our banner. Um, yeah, because I put this banner in the wrong place. I should have put it up on this side. But the, oh no, my other reinforcement was up on that side because I can't get my pincer movement that way. All right, so uh, one card goes lost. 
Um, yep. And then this guard is clearly just move one space and attack three plus zero. And this card goes lost just so she stays alive for our for Emmy's pincer movement. So move four does not mean actually does not move at all first. Attack five. Attack six because of the banner. Um, all right. On our pincer movement. Plus zero. So attack six on the priest. Uh, the priest has shield one. But has wound and so is going to die on his turn. That is awesome. But before we get there, is currently muddled. Not that it is really going to matter, but we do get an XP. Okay. That. And then move four. All right. I know my shield wall is gone. I've got tip of the spear. I want to get generally, I think I want the banner side of me. Hmm. I might actually do set for the charge next turn. So we'll go here. Or do I just want to step into the loot? Yeah, I'm just going to step. Oh, he's not dead yet. Okay, so coming to this side. Um, yeah. No, step it up here. No. Nope. Changing my mind. Okay. So that was our move. Now it is the priest's turn. Start of his turn takes a damage because of wound. Now drop a loot token. All right. Two guards left. Uh. Can Emmy do this by herself? Because Chris Roll is cannon fodder. She's going to long rest um, and just take the damage. Um, Chris, or Emmy, definitely has to short rest. Has not used any of her abilities yet. Or any of her items. So, still has some abilities on stuff. Uh, Joe, lots of tactical thinking needed for this game. That is correct. It's a, it's a very tactical game. All right. Going lost is the pincer movement. I kind of like that one because it's high damage. I'm going to keep that one, take a damage, regenerate might bring it right back to me. Oh, no, regenerate goes away anytime you take damage from any source. I assume even self-inflicted, so. Oh, that's the one I really wanted, though. I forgot I wanted to keep that in there. Darn it. I screwed up. I should have I should have just given up on the pincer movement and taken set for the charge because that that was going to give two damage to both Algox guards. All right, um, two cards in the discard pile, so uh, Chris is long resting and just acting as cannon fodder. All right, so. Emmy, what are you going to do? Um, these guys are probably not stepping up. We're going to combine effort 
let one of them step up and get wounded that way. And on the bottom, we'll summon our reinforcement again. There we go. So going on 32. Chris is 99. Emmy is 32. Halgox Guard, hasty assault. Move four, attack two. And then Emmy oh, and the archer is nothing. Oh, yeah, it's just the guards. Just the guards. Okay, they are going first. Um, okay. Guard number five does not have to move and just attacks uh, Chris. So, minus one. So, one damage which she can actually absorb. How awesome is that? And then six attacks for two, and it's a wash either way. She's got two cards to discard to avoid the damage, but then she's gonna be exhausted at the end of the turn. But at least she didn't you know, get wounded. All right, Emmy's turn. So I thought one was going to step up. One did not. Uh, so heal all allies. Um, hmm. Move to grant all. Two allies within two to move to. No, I'm summoning the reinforcement. Um, I'm going to do... Oh, it's, if I'm summoning the reinforcement, I'm not moving. So, reinforcement goes here. And then basic attack... Yeah, just nothing. I wonder. I should have. I should have let. I just wasted these two cards. Well, I mean, I, I summoned the reinforcement, so I guess that's enough. All right. Um, it was Emmy's turn. Guard does nothing. Chris roll uh, heals and then has no cards, so is exhausted. All right. So we'll do that in this. Um, yeah, we can just X her out that way. Okay, next round. All right. We have our pincer movement. <clears throat> we have our tip of the spear. <coughs> we actually could get tip of the spear if I moved three. But I can't move three. <coughs> I can move four. One, two, three, four. I can get the pincer movement that way. Yeah. Um, or I could just go early and throw my javelin at one of these guys. There's seven damage. Uh, taking them both down is going to be a challenge. Um, Throw javelin. Yeah. And then do this. No, I'm going to want to go early next turn as well. So. Oh, that's interesting. 
I could set up the tip of the spear that way, but pincer movement is more damage. So we're going to do this. All right, 21. Draw. Parry and thrust. Well, good thing I'm throwing my javelin then. All right. So um, setting up pincer movement, we'll move this guy over here. They do have shield one, but we are attacking with four. Okay, um, so attack four. Plus one is five. Shield one, four damage. And I was going on number six up here. One, two, three, four. All right, and no retaliate. Nice. Um, and then move four. Move to there. No. Move to here. And that means I did not want to move this guy so far away. Um, Yeah, we'll just leave him where he was. And we will loot. Get some coins. She wants to buy items, so that's good. All right, next round. Um, okay, we're going on 25. Venom Shiv, not moving, just attack and shield one. All right. I should have moved up onto them because all I have is a basic attack, but that's okay. Um, all right, basic attack on six. We have a chance to kill him. So basic move, basic attack. Um, move one, loot one. Yeah, too far away to loot. So basic move, basic attack. Minus one is only one, shield one, nothing gets through. All right. Now they can hurt. Oh, no, I did not mean to do that. How do I undo? That rock root, nobody got. All right. We do have cards. Let's see if it's enough to finish this out so that uh, Chris can get her battle goal, which she earned. Um, regroup, it is an early card, but I feel like I'm gonna need all the health I can get. So I will let it go lost. All right, five cards. Of the sphere pincer movement to three. I could do pincer movement this way, but I feel like I want to go early and kill the guard that's already low. That unfortunately I can't. I can tip of the spear on him. Yep. And I could push one of these guys far away. There's no traps, though. All right, 21. All right, he's going to hit hard but not move as much. So... Um,
and tip of the spear. I don't want to go there. Oh, that would almost be cool. I, I can't push them next to each other in a way that works with me still being an, ended up next to one of them. So I'm just going to move one and push two. No, that's pull. Ooh, yeah, that doesn't work. Oh, yes, it does. All right. First, if he moves here, I could move one and pull this guy one space. So let's move one and then within range three, pull two. So I pulled him a space closer to me. Now he's adjacent. Now I have tip of the spear on both of them. So three damage on both and pierce three. They don't have any shield, but still I get them both. That's key. Got to use multi attack when you can. All right. So first on five, this is attack four. Minus one is three. So on five takes nope that's a city guard dummy algux guard number five takes three damage and then number six is four damage thanks to the attack and that kills him all right Okay, um, city guard, <laughs> these useless guards never do anything. Algar's guard doesn't have to move, it attacks me for four. 2x is eight. I feel like I don't want to take eight. So, um, I will let, at all costs, go lost out of my hand to avoid that. Yeah. All right. Um, da, 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 next round. Okay. On 32, we're going to set up a pincer movement. Hopefully, it's before the Algax guards. It is. All right. He's going to strengthen, but we're going to do this real quick. So uh, on reinforcements turn, he moves two. And then I move two and let an ally within range two move two. We set up our pincer movement. Getting an XP. And hopefully this is it. Knock on wood. Don't be a miss. Don't be a miss. Don't be a curse. Don't be a miss. Don't be a curse. Plus one. Six. Guard is dead. All right. And that is the end of the scenario. So let's... Um... <laughs> this is nail biting. We made it. That was close. That was close. Okay. Um, so that's all resets. I'll gain the XP and the gold and the loot. I'll kind of do all that cleanup. Um, well, let me ask. Do you want to go through the end of scenario stuff and do our first outpost phase? Or should we do that at the start of next time? Uh, we're going almost three hours here. Um, do you want to see how things finish out and go through the outpost phase or I'm leaning towards setting that up for the start of next time. 
but uh, I'll give it just a second here to for the chat to catch up. Um, thanks again for joining me. Uh, great, snatching glory from the jaws of death. Uh, yes, and um, because we completed the scenario, even though Chris fell exhausted at our feet, she did accomplish her battle goal. So that is significant. Let me just go through this. This this will go fairly quickly here. All right. So she's going to get two check marks. Now that's her first two. So we don't have to worry about getting a perk. We do need to look at who got what on resources. So Chris got two lumber. Um, two hide and one snow thistle which one is the snow thistle that one's the snow thistle all right um emmy where's emmy's booklet right here all right, Joe says, I don't mind whatever you feel like, Jeff. So we're, we're going to go through this. We'll finish it out so that we don't forget, because it is going to be a week, a uh, week and a half before we come back. I will not be here all next week. All right, um, Emmy got two coins times two is four. So that gets her up to six gold. And she got two hide. And two more metal. So now she's up to four metal. Okay. Uh, bonus XP is six. Uh, and so I think they got five each, right? Yes. Five plus six is 11. So 19 for Emmy. And... Uh, 20 for Chris. Chris stayed seven or under, so she did get her uh, layabout. There we go. Battle goal there. It's not going to focus. That's okay. You can trust me. I can set it over here. All right. Um, Note to self, basic actions are pretty important. So um, nobody got a mastery. Uh, no. Place or remove one shadow token each round. No, we didn't really lay any down until we got to the, we only had one in the first room, so didn't get any to the second room. Okay, so we've got, uh, we do need to remove all of our curses i think there's one more curse over here yep the rest of our deck is good and is good look at that the miss was the very next card oh that could have been bad that would have been bad all right um gain resources from loot cards check mark check marks perks read the scenario conclusion and gain scenario rewards, gain four minus C inspiration and update the map. And then we'll return for an outpost phase. So before I forget, I'm gonna do the uh, inspiration. We're basically gonna get two inspiration every scenario because we are only two characters. All right, what do we read at the end of the scenario? We read 9.1. All right, here we go, 9.1. Oh, it's a big one. Buckle up. All right, um, we'll just kind of block the bottom here because the rest of it is all here. Okay. You lower your weapon and breathe as the remaining Algox retreat scurrying from Frosthaven like giant white mice. They'll be back, you're certain of it. 
but for now, you can rest. You wipe the suit from your face and take stock. Frosthaven is almost exactly what you imagined, a knot of gray stone and timber surrounded by sharpened palisade walls, a place where mere survival is an everyday concern and where only the desperate could feel at home. Thankfully, though, the townsfolk are tough. They're already on their feet, dousing fires and picking through rubble. In fact, one of those townspeople is marching right for you, a sharp-featured human woman with a fighter's muscular build, close-cropped hair, and dark skin. She approaches and offers a gauntleted hand in greeting. The sea be praised, she says, crushing your fingers with enthusiasm. We wouldn't have held out much longer without you. You nod and ask what happened. Oh, just life up north is all, she chuckles. I'm Satha, mayor of this fort, now that my predecessor and his lieutenant have fallen. As for the Algox, they've been at us all winter. Took them months to break through, but they finally did. Killed a dozen or so of my people, and would have done worse if you hadn't shown up. You explain who you are, that you've been sent from White Oak. At the mention of the capital, her face scrunches up in displeasure. It's about time they sent someone to help fix this mess they made, she says, then tries to lighten her mood. I, I don't mean to be ungrateful. I'm overjoyed to still be among the living. But a lot more people would be alive if your employers, the Merchants Guild, never stuck their noses in our business. I've spent my whole life here in what was once a fishing village, living and letting live with the Algox. Until last summer, that is, when the Merchants Guild sent some garrisons and bureaucratic types up here to see how Frosthaven could be more of use to the Empire. One of their expeditions proceeded to muck about in an Algox burial site, and the next thing we know, righteously angry Algox are attacking us. The ink stains immediately hightailed it out of here, leaving just a handful of soldiers behind us, behind to keep us safe. Satha clenches her gauntlet tighter and tighter as she tells the story, but now releases her grip. I've had to learn a lot of things in the last year. The hard truth is that the Algox refuse to be reasoned with. And the only way to stay alive and keep this place I call home is to win the fight, regardless of who started it. Her face softens and she clasps your shoulder hard. There's not many of you, but I'll take what I can get, especially now that our garrison's been thinned. And... As it happens, I have an idea. She turns and gestures to the town's smoldering walls. We took a beating in that fight, so if we're going to survive much longer, we'll have to do more than just sit around and wait for the next attack. She sizes you up carefully. I've already sent a scout to track the Algox back home to the mountains. Drop your gear at any longhouse that's still standing and rest up. As soon as you're ready, I want you to get over there and find a way to slow these attacks. The bunks in the remaining longhouses are all occupied by the injured, but you find a dry stretch of floor to lay your heads on your packs. You doubt you can sleep after the horror that greeted you in this little outpost, but before you know it, a young Valrath man is nudging you awake. Satha's scout has returned with his report. He tracked the attackers to the foothills of the Copperneck Mountains, where they entered a cave at the base of Snowscorn Mountain. Interestingly, a smaller band split from the main group before they reached the cave and hiked around to the mountain's deadly eastern face. The scout didn't see where they went, but he suspects a secret entrance to the Algox stronghold. One last thing, the Valrath says as you wipe the final dregs of sleep from your eyes. From your eyes. 
another group is moving toward snow scorn. They were Algox, no doubt, but they're dressed differently than the ones who attacked us. They carried long sticks and had some wild animals with them. I don't know if they're going to attack the mountain or reinforce it, but either way, you'd better get there quick. And we have our rewards. Gain 2 plus X morale, where X is the number of city guards still on the map. Well, ain't that just something? We were able to protect all of our city guards, so we get 2 plus 6. That is 8 morale. So we're going to, we started with 0, I'm sure. Or, or did we start with one? Oh, let me. I'm downtime starting our campaign. Let's see. Campaign sheet. Morale. Uh, lose one. Minimum value. Uh, the party's starting morale is determined at the end of scenario one. So I'm assuming gaining means from zero. So we have eight morale. Okay, new scenarios. Algox scouting two, which talked about the, uh, the potential secret entrance, uh, the eastern face, and then Algox offensive is going to the base of the Snowcorn Mountain. So two and three. You will now perform an outpost phase. Read campaign rules starting page 50 of the rule book. All right, we'll go through an outpost phase real quick here. Let me just get the stickers on the map. I'm going to bring the map over. All right, Joe says, glad I caught the stream. Looking forward to the next episode. I'm glad you were here, Joe. Uh, I hope this has been fun and not too spoilery. Obviously, there's going to be spoilers as we play through this. All right, let me grab our stickers. Here's our stickers, and I'm just going to bring the map up over on top. All right, the base of the Copperneck Mountains, I see them right here. So we need to open two and three. All right, two, or two is linked to four. Um, okay, two is at K8, and it looks like it's right on a fold because the sticker came across came apart on me uh there's three there's two all right Good enough. Uh, before I forget, we do need to check mark number one. A town in flames. I need to grab a pen, as I said earlier. Okay, and then three. Is also linked to four. So, I'm guessing we're, we're going to pick one or the other and then not get to play the other one and go straight into four afterwards. Ooh, there's some Algox here. 
Algox offensive. Yeah, they're all all around a, a cave here. So there's our stickers, and let's run through um, our outpost phase real quick. Um, Joe says, you got a good few followers, too. Well, uh, I'm glad. I'm glad you're all here joining us. I like the idea of the map changing as you play. Yeah, the map is really cool in that it kind of tracks the scenarios you've played. And then um, even more so in Frosthaven, Gloomhaven did not do this, but we've got all these buildings that are going to give us abilities as well. All right. So the first thing we do is mark passage of time. All right, so we will... Mark that first box on our campaign sheet. We need to come up with a party name. I forgot to mention that on the stream. So maybe we'll do that next time, but we need to come up with a name for our, uh, our adventuring party up here. Okay, don't need to do anything else there. Attack event, uh, so um, we need to draw the top card of the active outpost deck and resolve it. Active summer events. We're, we just got out of winter, so now we're in summer. All right. Pinter Drawman, Frosthaven's resident quattrell tinkerer, is unwrapping a package wrapped in brocade in his workshop. Come take a look. Can't believe it. One of the guards just dropped this off, says he found it on the hillside. Out from the cloth comes what looks like a long metallic purple blade. Remarkable! Believe it or not, this is an amulet from a Brumix. Quattro settlers brought them here over a century ago, but they all died out, or so I thought. Watch this! He swings a heavy wrench at the antler, snapping it in two pieces. All right. All right, let's see if the myths are true. He grabs the two halves of the antler and gently touches them together. Like magic, the two pieces fuse back together, looking as perfect as when he first unwrapped the antler. Pinter is grinning from ear to ear. A marvel of nature. Now what should we use it for? Option A, use it as a mutable material for crafting. Option B, Weave it into an art piece. Hmm. I th think, I don't know. Do we want extra material for crafting? I think that's going to be most useful. Weaving it into an art piece. Um... I'm more about function. I think we need a tool, so I'm gonna go for option A. <clears throat> Pinter fires up the furnace. We'll need to get it nice and toasty to melt this beauty. Pinter lobs the Brummix antler in. Soon, a purple liquid pours out the side and drains into the mold for three shiny purple bars. Should be good for just about anything. Take it. Just promise me if you ever find that beautiful Brummix, you treat it well. I heard they're crazy for axe nuts, if you believe it. Gain one morale. Gain three collective material resources of any kind. And gain the Brummix campaign sticker. 
All right. So, um, three resources, uh, craftable material resources of any kind, and then the Brummix campaign sticker. Uh, stickers are over here. Campaign stickers. Uh, Brumix tracks. I don't think it's Brumix tracks. I don't see one that's labeled just Brumix though. I'm going to have to look that up later to see if it's one of the Brumix tracks stickers. All right. And I'm going to decide on the resources later. So we will come back to that. It looks like we gave up getting an actual item, death proof charm. That would have been really cool. Um, so I think I, I'm regretting that choice now, but hey, what can you do? Um, we need to go through the building operations. Um, and I haven't made the building deck. So you know what? We're going to pick up the, uh, I, th I think the building deck is over there. Well, let's see. Active buildings. We have the craftsman, no effect. We can craft items. We can upgrade it. Um, brute or potions. I need to play with some of this a little bit more uh, before I can really make decisions here. So we're going to pause at this point and um, finish uh, the scenario here. We'll pick up next time with the middle of our outpost phase before we dive in. My current plan is Monday, March uh, 5th, 6th, whatever the Monday is. Um, fifth or sixth and we'll go from there uh really appreciate y'all being here with us uh this time around hope you enjoyed it this went a uh, lot longer than i expected it to but it is our first full scenario with these two new characters and so it took us a little bit longer but we'll we'll tighten it up and uh, go quicker in the future but uh, appreciate y'all being here and uh, until next time uh play lots of games we'll see you around thanks bye Actually, let me see if there's anybody we can go raid to. I should have checked that first. Um, uh, sure. Let's, no, I'm not seeing anybody I recognize. So we will just call that good. Uh, thanks again for being with us. And one last check of the uh, chat here. It's the sixth. Thanks, Joe. It's been great. It's been great having you. Thanks for everyone else. If you've just been watching, lurking, and we'll see you next time.